Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer on Wednesday the 25th of November. My name is the Reverend Paul Lavender. Thank you for joining me today. Trust that you're well and safe wherever you are. Please bow your heads with me now as we begin our time together by remembering the Lord's presence and as we wait for his voice as we both pray to him and listen to him. Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the congregation of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honour and majesty is his work and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established for ever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Thanks be to God for his word. Now let's pray together. Let's pray. Today, let us praise and thank God for all great and simple joys. For the gift of wonder, the joy of discovery, the everlasting freshness of experience. For all that comes to us through sympathy and through sorrow. <clears throat> for the joy of work attempted and achieved. For musicians, poets, artists, all who work in form and colour, to increase the beauty of life, for the likeness of Christ in ordinary people, their forbearance, courage and kindness, and for quiet and faithful service cheerfully given. We thank and we praise God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of all mercy, Give us grace to make a fresh start with you today. We have not loved you with our whole heart, nor have we loved our neighbour as ourselves. As we hope to be forgiven, teach us also to forgive and lead us forward in a new life where neither grudges nor resentment have a part. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. <coughs> May Almighty God forgive us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Give us time to amend our lives and bring us the grace and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The moment we're reading through Paul's second letter to the Thessalonians and today we read in chapter 2 beginning to read at the 13th verse. But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose, he called you through proclamation of the good news so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. Thanks be to God. 
for this word. Stand firm, Paul writes. Stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us. You know, the word tradition can seem rather musty, can seem old fashioned, it can seem boring. Hold fast to traditions. Tradition is often referred to as the way we do things around here. The, the habits that we got into and there's nothing wrong with that sometimes good and godly habits are so essential for us as we seek to follow the lord jesus it's a habit to read the bible it's a habit to pray to give uh, to bless others to listen for god's voice to go to church when we can and to join in fellowship with other christians all of these things are good and godly habits but that's not the tradition that Paul is writing about here. Hold fast to traditions that you were taught by us. So he's not saying about when you were stand up in church or what version of the Bible you should use. That's all complete nonsense. Traditions, the word here, is about um, the body of teaching or the things that handed on. Elsewhere, Paul, in his letter to the uh, Corinthians, says, For I, I passed on to you that which was of first importance and the word passed on is related to the word for tradition here what's the tradition it is that essential teaching about jesus you know whatever else we are we are a people who are founded not on worshiping the bible but on worshiping and following jesus and we thank god for that revelation that he made uniquely through his son whose incarnation we're celebrating this advent and christmas time and for the sending of the holy spirit who jesus said would lead us into truth and that truth about who jesus is and why he came is the tradition in which we were taught paul says and which he taught the thessalonians about and therefore they should hold fast to it why because it leads them to life it leads them to stay faithful because it's as he prays in the next verse it's indeed the lord jesus christ who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope that will comfort and strengthen us in every good work you see paul is is encouraging these christians to be at work in the world here and now and to remain faithful in what they're called to do the best way in which to bring honor and glory to jesus is to stay faithful to that which you know about him trust him from the bottom of your heart let's confess our faith together we use the words of the apostles creed i believe in god father almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray together for our world and for ourselves and for those we know and love. Let's pray together. Firstly, today we pray for those who tend and care for the environment. Creator God, you made all things and you made all things good. Show us how to respect the fragile balance of life and guide by your wisdom those who have power to care for and enhance the environments in which we live. We pray, Lord, that you would 
change the heart and minds of those who seek to destroy the rich environment of nature, whether it be in the Amazonian rainforests or here in the United Kingdom, as green belts are built upon and valuable farming land destroyed. We pray that by decisions taken, life may be cherished and the good and fruitful earth be preserved for future generations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And today we pray for the church in Tunisia and we pray for church leaders who look for ways to stay connected with their congregations under COVID-19 restrictions. We pray for the guidance and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and that the leaders of the church may lead their congregations towards a fuller experience of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we pray for the work of BMS World Mission, we pray for the work in Guinea, that as workers there help to develop community enterprises, that may be a demonstration of God's love and that they may be able to draw people into conversations about Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we take a moment to quietly pray for those we know and love and for ourselves as we offer our intentions to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now, and for ever. Amen. <laughs> Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth, wisdom and might, honour and glory and praise, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and with those whom you love and with God's people everywhere today and for evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me today and I look forward to joining with you again tomorrow for daily prayer. Until we meet again, goodbye and God bless. <laughs>